In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate again the life of Christ being given to us, and his mother Mary we acknowledge as being an instrument of God's grace and, and the mother of God as we recognize the full divinity and humanity in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mindful of this highest calling to holiness that is embodied in the Blessed Virgin Mary and given to us in our Lord Jesus Christ, we begin the celebration of the Eucharist today, asking the Lord for forgiveness for our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Christ, mercy. Have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the fruitful virginity of blessed Mary bestowed on the human race the grace of eternal salvation, grant, we pray, that we may experience the intercession of her through whom we were found worthy to receive the author of life, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to Aaron and his sons and tell them, This is how you shall bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. So shall they invoke my name upon the Israelites, and I will bless them. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May God bless us in his mercy. May God bless us in his mercy. May God have pity on us and bless us. May he let his face shine upon us. So may your way be known upon earth, among all nations, your salvation. May God bless us in his mercy. May the nations be glad and exult, because you rule the peoples in equity, the nations on the earth you guide. May God bless us in his mercy. May the peoples praise you, O God, May all the peoples praise you. May God bless us, and may all the ends of the earth fear him. May God bless us in his mercy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, 
born under the law to ransom those under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. As proof that you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets. In these last days, he has spoken to us through the Son. Alleluia, alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. The shepherds went in haste to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about this child. All who heard it were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God, for they had all they had seen and heard, just as it had been, just as it had been told to them. When eight days were completed for his circumcision, he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel, before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What a wonderful way to begin a new year, and one that we hope will be, and place our trust and faith, will be probably a little more dynamic and, and light-filled than this previous year of 2020. And so, Happy New Year. Sorry, I wasn't saying that as to get a response, but it is the natural response. And what a better day to recognize the motherhood of Mary. Really, as we begin a new year, when she was immaculately conceived and when she said yes to the message of Gabriel, the angel, human history was changed through her person, the person of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Again, starting with her immaculate conception, once again, salvation enters into human history. And so for us to begin always, begin a new year with that fundamental reference point of our salvation re-entering into the world through the Blessed Virgin Mary and through the birth and the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. That indeed is starting each and every year off on the right foot, no matter whatever else is going on in our world. It wasn't until the Council of Nicaea in 431 when the debate about Jesus' identity as God and man was actually settled. They rejected the idea that Jesus was God and only looked like a man. The council also rejected the position that he was only a man with special powers given to him by God. It was decided that Jesus had two natures, one divine and one human, united in his one person. And this is what we mean when we call him the incarnation, fully human, fully divine in the one person of Jesus Christ. And so therefore, it could be reasonably said of Mary that she gave birth to the person of Jesus, who is fully divine and fully human, that she was Theotokos, which in Greek means God-bearer. Or as we say today, she is the mother of God. The solemnity today was established as a way to confirm the belief that Jesus had two natures united in the one person, and therefore his one, the one person of Jesus. And therefore, we could call Mary the mother of God, 
And again, it's that fundamental beginning place when we talk, speak about how salvation has re-entered human history. Now, I've heard it said that, or I kind of looked up actually, I researched this a little bit, that the human heart, the heart is a muscle, and that the human heart, on average, beats about 80 times a minute, which means that in one hour, the heart will beat 4,800 times, and over the course of a day, the muscle of the heart will beat 115,000 times. So it means that during her pregnancy, Mary's heart beat 31 and a half million times to provide oxygen and nutrients to the blood of Jesus while he was in the womb. We speak about the authority, the divine authority of our Lord, and it is so important to visit on this day in which we recognize the motherhood of Mary, being the mother of God, that Jesus subjects himself in his incarnation to two authorities. He subjects himself to the authority of his human nature, meaning he needs to have a mother, meaning that even before he's born, he needs oxygen and he needs nutrients provided by his mother to him. It also means that when he's born, he's gonna need food, He'll need oxygen. He'll need to sleep. He needs to grow and mature as a human being does. He needs to be taught. Now, granted, everything that Jesus does in his human and divine nature, they never compete with each other. Fully respective of those natures, united in our Lord, it's the ultimate glorification of God, and it is not only the lowering of Jesus down to humanity. He does it so that humanity itself can be raised up to the divine. So he re-divinizes our humanity by becoming one of us, by being born of Mary. And so he subjects himself to the laws of just what it means to be human. And I'm not talking about original sin, the effects of sin. I'm talking about, again, the basic needs to breathe, to sleep, to grow, to mature, to learn. So Mary and Joseph, you know, they teach him how to walk. They teach him all those things, languages and all. You know, it's got to be respectful of both his human and divine nature. So there's the authority of his human nature, and then there, of course, is the authority of his mother, which in the Ten Commandments, honoring thy father and mother is the fourth commandment. It's a commandment given by God. And he honors that authority most exquisitely at the, when he's dying on the cross. He acknowledges that authority by telling his mother to John the Apostle, behold your son, and to John the Apostle, behold your mother. And so he's binding his mother, Mary, to, the, to all of humanity. And again, just as he is bound to all of humanity through becoming incarnate, and again, that image of 31 and a half million times, you know, sharing in that, heart, that heartbeat of Mary. God doesn't lower himself just to become human. He, he does it to raise us up to the divine. Today we hear in the scriptures that the Mary storing all of these experiences, the visit of the shepherds, and soon it will be the Magi, and, and his being presented in the temple, and Simeon's prophecy that he will be the downfall and the raising up of many, the cause for the downfall of many and the rising up of many. And she holds all these things in her heart. The scriptures, in the scriptures, the heart is viewed not only as a vital bodily organ, but it's also understood, the heart, it is understood to be the center of hidden human, hidden emotion, intellectual, and moral activity. So it is not just the muscle that provides life to the body and blood, but it's also kind of that center of life providing intellectual and emotional, moral activity. We hear this elsewhere in the scripture readings, um, but the Lord looks to the heart. And for Samuel, man looks to the outward appearance, but the Lord looks to the heart. The Lord searches all hearts to renew reward, all according to their conduct. In the judgment, in the time of judgment, this is from 1 Corinthians, in the time of judgment, God will expose the hidden counsels of the heart. And so it is kind of that, that place of, of intellectual, emotional, moral activity, kind of that center, center of self. So... Today, as we, we think about this, this heart of Mary, which is also in her, her um, it's also broken open, it's shared, her heart is shared with Jesus, and it's also shared with us, we're reminded of that divinity, and 
of our Lord, but also we remember that Mary's vocation throughout her life, from the Annunciation to the time of Jesus' death to the time of her assumption into heaven, is to care for the body and life of her son. And it's so evident when we think about him being born into the world, and we think of him as an infant or as a child, but that remains constant throughout her life. She will always be the mother of Jesus. She will always be the mother of God. And now, after he ascends to heaven and the Holy Spirit is given to us, that remains true more than ever because the Holy Spirit binds us together in the mystical body of Christ. And therefore, Mary's intercession as our mother and the mother of Jesus is actually more profoundly manifest in, in humanity than it was when Jesus was announced, announced or when Jesus was born. Her care, so she's worried about, she's concerned that the will of God, that the plan of God, that the fullness of health in the living body of Christ that is shared with us is, is manifested here on earth. That all souls and all nations are, are drawn and baptized, go out and baptize all nations, are drawn to the Lord. She's concerned about vocations to the priesthood and to the religious life, to the brotherhood and the sisterhood. She's concerned about healthy healthy and holy marriages. She's concerned about life issues, making sure that we honor the dignity of life from, from conception to, to natural death because of all these ways in which she has acknowledged the fullness of life that God desires for humanity. She, how she firsthand experienced it through the life, very life of her son and her own, own life, very, very natural calling to be a mother, natural calling to be a wife, natural calling to raise a child. And so her concern um, is present more than ever. And so we honor Mary today in that motherhood, being the mother of God and therefore being the mother of us all. We, we it, it just are astonished by the exquisite sensitivity that God has toward the human condition and how it is through the human condition that he forgives, sanctifies, and raises up to the heavenly. And this example of Mary being the mother of God and Jesus becoming incarnate in the world as we celebrate in this Christmas season, extraordinary, uh, extraordinary food for thought and nourishment for our souls. As we contemplate our Mother Mary, our Lord Jesus, and the life that they have called us to, the life that they have provided for us here on earth and in heaven. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our loving Savior has given us the Blessed Virgin Mary to be our mother. With confidence in the Father's care, we now pray that Mary, mother of the church, will guide and protect the church with her motherly love. We pray to the Lord. On this day of world peace, that Mary, Queen of Peace, will intercede to bring lasting peace to all the world. 
We pray to the Lord. For all families, that this new year will be a time of peace and abiding charity, we pray to the Lord. For all mothers, especially those who are expecting a newborn child, that they find strength and inspiration from the prayers and examples of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we pray to the Lord. For the grace to deepen our devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord for the sick and suffering of our parish, all those stricken with COVID-19, for those who, we have asked for, who have asked for our prayers, and those for whom we have promised to pray, we pray to the Lord. Lord for all who have died, that they will be raised up to the fullness of heavenly life in Christ, we pray to the Lord. For the repose of the soul of Katie Lane Van Orden, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord for all who are on the Holy Family prayer list and all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord Loving Father, you bless us with a gift that exceeds all gifts you gave to Adam. You give us a mother who is the mother of your son. Keep us close in your love through Mary's maternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who in your kindness, who in your kindness begin all good things and bring them to fulfillment, grant to us who find joy in the solemnity of the Holy Mother of God that just as we glory in the beginnings of your grace, so one day we, we may rejoice in its completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord our Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on the solemnity of the motherhood of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, powers tremble before you, heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim Worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to unite, grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Andrew, our Bishop, and all those holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, the spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. 
through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those who would like to receive the Eucharist on the hand, we invite you to come up to the cathedral side of the church. For those who would like to receive the Eucharist on the tongue or on the hand, uh, please come up to the ambo side of the church. And uh, thank you for being mindful of your social distancing.
prayer of spiritual communion for those watching at home. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The Lord be with you. Oh, let us pray. We have received this heavenly sacrament with joy, O Lord. Grant, we pray, that it may lead us to eternal life. For we rejoice to proclaim the blessed ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of your Son and Mother of the Church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. On behalf of the Dominican Friars and the staff here at Holy Family Old Cathedral, we just want to uh, wish you a continuing Merry Christmas season and a joyful, blessed New Year, especially as today we recognize the motherhood of Mary, of God, Mary, the mother of God, and also the mother of us all. May you have a thoroughly uh, blessed and joyful season. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. May the source of an origin of all blessing grant you grace, pour out his blessing in abundance, and keep you safe from harm throughout the year. Amen. Amen. May he give you integrity in the faith, endurance in hope, and perseverance in charity, with holy patience to the end. Amen. Amen. May he order your days and your deeds in his peace, grant your prayers in this and in every place, and lead you happily to eternal life. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen. Thanks be to God. Amen.